有些人会说我们闪电狼是韩国杀手这个称号。FW의 장점은 약간 그 초반 기세 싸움 유리한 걸로 약간 굴리자 약간 이런 거에서 강한데 그게 약간 좀 한국 스타일의 약간 강한 느낌이 들어서 FW가 좀 한국 팀 상대로 잘하는 것 같아요. Oh, 感觉都蛮有把握的。아무래도 FW 가이제그룹스테이지에서저희상대로2대0을했잖아요그래서그팀자체가저희팀에이길수있다고생각을하고있을것같고약간그게좀독이될수도있다고저는생각을합니다很少有国际队伍可以在就是国际赛上面在 B O 五打赢韩国队嘛，所以我希望我们可以有机会可以来就是挑战这个历史看看。Welcome back to the Zenith Arena, where yesterday we saw a tense three-game series between RNG and Fnatic. Now the LPL representatives came out on top, and today we find out who faces them in the finals on Sunday. Of course, the crowd is packed to the brim of this arena as they were yesterday. The chants have been going on for over an hour, and you're getting a look at the Rob Opera National de Paris and the various other gorgeous backdrops Paris has to offer. Hello, everyone. I'm James Dash Patterson, joined by Joshua Jatliesman, Martin Deficiolunga, and Indiana Frosker in black for our second semifinal of the knockout stage. How are you guys doing today? Hoping for something more than three games? As long as they're as exciting as the three games that we had yesterday, absolutely. I'll take a little bit more than three games, honestly. Give me five. That's all I'm asking for. Yeah, especially with the opportunity here. Flash Wolves, known as the Korean Killers, but also did fall the Koreans last year at MSI. Exactly, there is some history there. Of course, the immediate history of the tournament with the 2-0 over Kingdom. We heard it in the opening. They are confident, but there's always that looming idea, the best of fives for the Korean teams and how they'll perform at international tournaments. With that, it's time to welcome our competitors. So let's send it back over to Chips and Noir. Les Kingzone Dragonix et je vous propose directement d'accueillir les deux équipes du jour avec comme première les Flash Walls. Une première salve d'applaudissements s'il vous plaît pour les champions de la LMS Quatre fois champions consécutivement dans leur région. Ils sont la très grande surprise des groupes stage de ce MSI. Je vous demande, le Zénith Paris, encore une fois, s'il vous plaît, de faire du bruit pour ces joueurs Flash Walls. Et sur la top lane, une salle d'applaudissements, s'il vous plaît, pour le très talentueux Anabi Dans la jungle, c'est le jeune joueur coréen, Mouchu Sur la mid lane, le vétéran, Maple Au poste de Cariadé, des encouragements s'il vous plaît pour Betty Et au poste de support, le stratège de l'équipe, Sword Heart Des applaudissements également pour le coach de l'équipe, War Horse Et le support, bien entendu, une salle d'applaudissements, s'il vous plaît, pour Morning Pour les Flash Walls, une dernière fois, on les encourage, s'il vous plaît 
Et bien sûr, Chips, leurs adversaires ne peuvent pas être négligés. Champion de Corée, la région la plus compétitive du monde. J'ai nommé les Kuzos. Ils l'ont dit, les Coréennes Killers, ils vont en avoir besoin. Peu d'équipes peuvent se vanter d'avoir battu une équipe coréenne en BO5. Ils viennent ici à Paris pour gagner et pour faire prévaloir la domination de leur région. S'il vous plaît pour les Kingston, une fois de plus Sur la top lane, le conquérant, Khan Dans la jungle, le prodige, Pi Le tueur prêt Et afin de le soutenir, bien sûr, Gorilla Et enfin, bien sûr, leur coach, Axine Ainsi que, bien sûr, le jungler remplaçant, Kuz Une dernière fois pour les deux équipes, s'il vous plaît, un tonnerre d'applaudissements Both teams looking to challenge RNG tomorrow in the finals. Neither team in their home region, but the Parisian crowd, very warm welcome handed to both of these squads as they take to the stage today. Now, the winner of today's best of five will move forward to the finals taking place tomorrow against RNG, who put on quite the show yesterday against Fnatic. And that's the thing, RNG really didn't have to stress so many strategies. They came out with the Caitlyn, they kind of rolled over Fnatic, but still a very close 3-0. Yeah, the games had Fnatic with a gold lead in all three of them, but they could never quite get over the hump to killing RNG's Nexus. Yeah, I, I think they managed to give the European fans a lot of hope in each game, and I'm glad they never actually backed down. They didn't try and change the strategy. They kept looking like the same team over and over, but Let's be honest here, they were outmatched towards yep. the end of each game, and that's why they lost 3-0. Some questions definitely raised, though, about the state of RNG as they looked near unbeatable mm -hmm. at the end of the group stage, and because of those gold leads built yesterday, Jap, the question is, hey, would another team with similar gold leads be able to bridge that gap? Yeah, and that's something we're going to have to judge based on today's games as well, because RNG didn't have to change their strategy that often. We don't know how much more they have in the tank. So let's dive right into it. Moving on to today's series, despite what felt like a total implosion for the Flash Wolves at Worlds 2017 and moving into 2018, the representatives from the LMS finished top two in MSI groups and must face a Korean team in the semifinals here. And that's the thing, you know, losing Carsa, losing that Carsa Maple Star synergy, a lot of people discounted Flash Wolves, but they came in very hot and heavy into the group stage, rolling over everyone with massive leads, and particularly in the early game. These are you know, 20 minute teams, tops, trying to find their wins at 25 to 27 minutes. Yeah, and at the end of the day, it's the best group stage that Flash Wolves has ever had at MSI. They've 2 0 a Korean team before, but have never looked this good going into the knockout stage. So then let's go ahead and contrast that to the kind of rocky group stage that King Zone had, of course, getting 2 0 by the very team they're going to face today. Yeah, it's been such a weird tournament if you are a Korean fan, and we were all sitting back home doing this play, watching a King Zone team destroy the LCK, and felt like, okay, they were going to be unbeatable but we have seen multiple members have issues when it comes to carrying games like Khan does not look like the guy we saw back in the LCK BDD is no longer the guy who can just always get control of mid and has left a lot of questions around Kingstone exactly and you look at how much they dominated the LCK and then you also look at their international track record as a region the LCK 19 and 3 in best of fives against other regions all time and if you just look at msi history two out of three the last five world championships they've been so so dominant and king zone has looked shaky well this stat actually just makes it so hard with today's game 
because you want to just look at a group stage and say, ah, Flash Wolves look like the stronger team. They know exactly how to beat Kingston. But because it is a best of five, because they've had a couple of days now to look back at what went wrong during the group stage, mm -hmm. it just feels so hard. Always the adjustment period. Exactly. It feels so hard to say, oh, no, this time it will not be the Korean team winning. Well, let's try and parse through it a little bit to see how we got to the point where most pre-tournament predictions went totally awry. Look no further than the performances in the top lane, I think, with these two squads. Yeah, for me, Khan, it's just it's his individual performance. We've seen the carries, we've seen the tanks from him, but it's mostly just his decision making that he's making on the map. You know, some of these teleports in the lines. Yeah, and then you also have on the other side, Hanabi has been so strong in different situations. You thought he was just a tank player, then he pulled out the Yasuo up against Kingzone, and as a rookie, that was very unexpected. Not to mention how often they've been able to blind pick his yeah. champion for the team. That one is really important for their draft, which is something we can discuss later as well. But Hanabi often gets left kind of on his own, and he needs to do well against very, very good top laners. Khan is then the guy who normally punishes that. He will destroy you if you leave Khan alone. Not this tournament. The thing that I'm really impressed, though, with Hanavi is his ability to recognize what his responsibility is to his team, however. When he's on a tank, we heard Fnatic talk about this guy is constantly grouping, he's not playing the side lanes, and it's because he recognizes exactly what Flash will need from him in any particular moment. And it's probably fair to say that Khan has not really recognized what Kingston needed from him in a lot of the games. When he's been on a tank or when he was on the Vladimir, he had bad TP, so he was at the wrong place at the wrong time, like this example we see here where he just ends up dying. That's the TP I just referred to before you, where it's not even necessary. They've already left the team fight, and he comes in and he just ends up dying. And it's been a very rough tournament because he's not been able to just dominate 1v1. I think it's interesting to think about the fact that over the last two years, if you think top lane, you think Khan. That name will rise to the top mm -hmm. of a lot of discussions. You think the last two years, you think top lane. Hanabi was not a name that was known for many people prior to this tournament alone. And so what a task he has ahead of him, a best of five against Khan, even though he has found success so far in the group stages against him. But with that, I want to turn our attention to the prediction phase, that fun game we like to play around these best of five. So who do you you believe will deny or rather make that trip to the finals and challenge RNG for the MSI title chat. We're going to start down there. Yeah, you look at the way the King Zone played in the group stage, and I don't think that's King Zone's level. Uh, I think they will be able to recover a little bit for the the best of five stages. And I look at how Flash Wolves was able to start six and zero, but finish one and three. And I think King Zone's going to be able to figure out what. I think is a relatively fragile game state that Flash has been able to win in. Mm -hmm. And I think if King Zone plays more like they did in the LCK, Khan with confidence, Peanut with confidence, aggressive play that they haven't been able to hit, they'll win 3 1. Jad trusts that the homework's been done for the side of King Zone. Deficio, what are you thinking? I'm going King Zone 3 2. I also trust they will look better. But I still think there'll be some issues for them. They will definitely lose some of these early games. They will have some issues in certain drafts where Sword Art gets a counter pick and bam, Flash Rolls can just fire off and actually do really well. But the reason I think the 3-2 kicks in is because Flash Rolls late game, I'm not confident they will always be able to close out these games. I'm not confident they can always manage to secure that first Baron against Kingstone. So I think there will be some of these games that will bounce back. And then I can see with the flexibility of a Kingstone lineup towards the end of this, they know how to draft and they know how to beat Flash Wolves. Frostgren, what do you got for me? I'm going to go Flash Wolves. I think when there's smoke that there's fire and I'm tired of a lot of people just banking on the fact that this is the Korean team, they cannot be infallible in a best of five. I think we need to separate some of Kingzone from Korea. This is Khan that's underperformed multiple times on an international stage, including at Worlds. This is Sword Art against Prey and Gorilla. He has a winning record against this duo right now. And I think that stylistically, Flash Wolves hating hard and early. Yes, if Kingzone play how they did domestically, they're just going to go toe to toe. I don't necessarily say LCK go back to that aggressive style and they roll over Flash Wolves. Well, unlike yesterday, we have a split desk this time around. So I want to get into a little bit more why these predictions are made and how you think they might be fulfilled with some win conditions for these squads. Jat, you talk about maybe the homework being done for Kingzone. In your mind, what answers do they need to have arrived at in order to take down Flash Wolves? Yeah, well, looking at Flash Wolves' success is, I think, where Kingzone ends up starting. Uh, when you see Flash Wolves win, Mujin has the highest jungle proximity as well as camping mid lane for most of the game. Then they also get the pressure mid lane so that they can go bottom lane with a range support counter pick and kind of get that pressure. But if anything of that changes, if Khan can take over in the top lane, or if they can actually just get some of those power picks, I think they can foil some of the things Flash Wolves have been working on. But I actually really like how Flash Wolves uh, springboard Mujin into those setups. 
out of 11 games, they've been invaded level one eight times. And so Flash Wolves understand exactly how to separate the map, how to get their jungler ahead. I think they recognize that this is such a vital strategy as much as Kingzone will also recognize that they need to shut down Mujin. Deficio, you were the 3-2 pick here. So I want to watch you kind of try and reconcile these points between the two other analysts. I agree with everyone. <laughs> Both teams can win, but yeah. I, I think because Flash Wolves have focused so much on this one specific style, where there is a lot around having invading jungler and a bot lane that can push, right. Kingston can go into the very first draft phase, which I think will actually be the most important one for the entire series, because it will show us if these teams are reading each other. Kingston can go in and say, we will actually last pick for Gorilla this time. We will try and have a winning bot lane. And let's see then if Hanabi is ready. First game on stage to grab a carry top and go toe-to-toe -to -toe again. I can feel the energy on the desk. I know you guys want to jump in some more, but it's time for some gameplay. So we're going to toss it up to the casters to get us into game one of this semifinal series. Merci beaucoup, Dash. Bienvenue, mesdames et messieurs. Welcome to Paris. I speak a little <laughs> of the local language. I am Freak. Here with Sam, Kobe, Hartman, Kensler, Chris, Papa Smithy Smith. Who's excited like me? I don't know exactly like Freak, if we can be <laughs> excited best like Freak. I guess. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it's going to be absolutely wonderful. Regional champions, Flash Wolves on your left, winning the LMS so many times in a row. King Zone on the far right, formerly, formerly Longju last year, two-time LCK champions as well, hoping this will not be a knockout stage exit like it was at Worlds last time. It's certainly an impressive resume here uh, from King Zone, you know, and they should be the feared team. Yeah. Should be kind of the top of the table.